When is it going to be time for the uh, Republican Party uh, to a man uh, to step up to the plate and either uh, marry Donald Trump and his views, and I mean all of them, or uh, divorce Donald Trump and his views, and I mean all of them? Now, obviously, some of the things that he's saying uh, do have uh, some credence, so maybe I should back up uh, from saying all of them. Uh, let me uh, fall back to the majority uh, of them, and in particular, the most dangerous ones. The thing that I believe uh, should get him kicked to the curb more so than anything else is uh, his current uh, views regarding uh, Vladimir Putin. Now, you have some people like uh, Mike Pence, who you can understand uh, since he is uh, Trump's running mate. He's doubling down with uh, Trump. And of course you have uh, that nut, Rudy Giuliani. Uh, he's a racist to his heart. And uh, he's standing with Trump. But you have a lot of Republicans that are pretty even-minded, and I'll say reasonable. And there's a lot of silence regarding Donald Trump's positions, especially uh, this latest thing regarding Putin. Now. Um, you're going to see uh, videos that I made regarding a bunch of this stuff. And then it's going to pretty much be up to you to decide where you stand and where you believe the majority of the Republican elected officials uh, should stand. And again, you know, this is just uh, my opinion about something that I really believe should be an albatross around everybody's neck. If you're for them, then you gotta own uh, this particular position. And if you're against them, and if you're against this position, then you know you need to own that position as well. In my opinion, he's wrong. Uh, Putin is a dictator. He kills people that disagree with him. He deports pollsters that uh, don't uh, get his numbers up as high as he wants them. He's doing all kinds of stuff. And if you're going to heap praise on him, in my opinion, that means you're praising the majority, if not all of his actions. I think it's inarguable uh, that Vladimir Putin has been a stronger leader in his country than Barack Obama has been in this country. And that's going to change the day that Donald Trump becomes president of the United States of America. And spoke the truth to the American people, just like Donald Trump has. Reagan knew what Donald Trump knows. We must have the highest standards of integrity in the highest office in the land. 1980. They referred to Trump as Ronald Reagan. Ronald Reagan is going to go into negotiations with Putin from a position of strength. Hillary Clinton and Barack Obama gave up the game on day one when they reset the relationship with Russia and they gave up the nuclear defense of Poland and the Czech Republic. Putin took a look at them and said, I can push these guys around the world. These are our children compared to me. Donald Trump is not a well, child. Oh, so I thought, well, what about the Reagan era? Would I think that Gorbachev was a better leader for Russians than Ronald Reagan was for Americans during that era? And I would say no. But if I have to wonder if Putin is a better leader for Russians today than Obama is for Americans, I look at that thing a little differently and I think it's more likely a yes answer to that question. The one thing I know about Vladimir Putin is he, he's doing what's right for Russia. There's no question about that. 
when I listen to the Obama administration, I'm not sure if they're doing what's right for this country, if they're doing for what's right for our enemies. There are times I don't even know. I think it's inarguable uh, that Vladimir Putin has been a stronger leader in his country than Barack Obama has been in this country. And that's going to change the day that Donald Trump becomes president of the United States of America. Do these morons know that he murders his opponents, that he controls the media, that he is a dictator? Do these morons understand that? It's not funny anymore. All right, this uh, Donald Trump uh, situation with him uh, praising uh, Putin uh, is getting me out of a quasi sick bed. Um, Trump is ridiculous, and um, I'm, I'm going to line up several videos uh, today uh, pointing several things out. But uh, in this particular video, it's going to be uh, a video regarding the uh, cowards in the Republican Party uh, for not uh, stepping up to the plate and uh, speaking out against uh, Donald Trump in his support of uh, Vladimir Putin. And I'm going to be honest with you, I, I, I think a lot of it has to do with their disdain or hate, you know, in the extreme of uh, Barack Obama. And it's, uh, in my opinion, an unreasonable hate of the man. It's not even of the policies and the things that he's purporting. I think uh, it has to do with the obvious thing as soon as you lay eyes on them and you can figure that out for yourself. Reaction to today's political headlines. I'm joined now by Howard Feynman, global editorial director for the Huffington Post and MSNBC contributor Katie Packer, former campaign manager for Mitt Romney in 2012. Thank you both. I feel so awesome. I got a great panel. Let's launch in here. Howard, uh, Giuliani, yesterday, hardball discussing Trump and birtherism. Let's play it. Donald Trump believes now that he was born in the United States. But that issue was When's raised originally. It? That issue was raised originally. When is he going Hillary to say that Clinton's this president campaign? is legitimate? This is a fundamental question, Mr. Mayor. Is the president of the United States legitimate or not? He Do you believe it? If you believe he, it, why does your candidate state it? I believe it. He believes it. We all believe it. Now, that's a lie because uh, Giuliani uh, tried to say that uh, Trump uh, said that he believed that uh, Obama uh, was uh, a legitimate citizen two to three years ago, two or three years ago. That's what his exact words were. That's a lie because as late as uh, last year when uh, Trump uh, spoke before uh, one of those uh, right-wing um, groups, I think it was uh, Red State, if I'm not mistaken. I, I believe it was Red State. It was Red State or one of the other ones. He brought up the birthday issue again at that point. And there is no video footage anywhere where Trump says that he believes that uh, President Obama was born in the United States. So, you know, that, that's, a bunch of, that's a bunch of crap. And uh, Kellyanne Conway got on um, CBS this morning and she tried to say the same thing and they called her on it. And um, Ben Carson has gotten on uh, mainstream media and said that uh, he believes that uh, Trump should apologize. Uh, and a couple of other uh, surrogates have gotten on there. But to date, nobody has seen Donald Trump uh, on video anywhere stating that uh, he was wrong and that he believes that uh, the president uh, was born in the United States. Except for, uh, Howard, we don't have any tape of Donald no. Trump ever reversing or apologizing or admitting that these detectives that he allegedly sent to Hawaii who came back with stuff we all wouldn't believe, incredible details, that all of it either was a lie or he found nothing. Yeah, and I always love it when Chris Matthews' eyes light up like that and he bores in because he was making the exact point that you just made, which is Donald Trump has not said it. I don't think Donald Trump will say it. Just having Rudy Giuliani say it or having Kellyanne Conway say it today is not the same thing. And don't forget, Tamron, that really Donald Trump this time around entered the national stage as a birther. It was his original calling card, and in a way it's the absolute essence of his identity. 
in terms of name calling, dictatorial behavior, and so forth. So it's essential to the public persona of Donald Trump, and I don't think you're going to see him change it himself. All right. All right, and just uh, to add a little more information, when they do a survey amongst uh, the uh, Trump supporters, 40% uh, of them still believe that President Obama was born in Kenya and that he's a Muslim. If Trump had said anything like that, uh, that number should have and would have decreased substantially. You're never going to convince uh, all of the far right or alt right uh, wing nuts uh, of uh, Obama being legit, but uh, your moderate, you know, or even slightly far right uh, Republicans uh, probably, if Trump said something, would see the light of day. We'll see if it's asked at any of the debates coming up and mm -hmm. whether he'll pivot. Um, well, Lester, it could be Lester's first question. It could be his first question. Katie, let's switch to um, Donald Trump. I know we've talked a lot about what he said regarding Vladimir Putin. One of the things that stuck out to me was this moment. Let's play it. When referring to a comment that Putin made about you, I think he called you a brilliant leader, you said it's always a great honor to be so nicely complimented by a man so highly respected within his country and beyond. Now, one thing that a lot of people don't know uh, that uh, some research came out on, uh, Vladimir Putin did call Donald Trump a brilliant leader, but the actual word that he used was uh, in reference to being flamboyant, not regarding his intelligence, but being brilliant as far as uh, being a, a flamboyant, large light. That's what he was talking about, not regarding his intelligence. And the Trump people didn't even realize that, as a lot of people don't realize that, because they, most people took the word uh, brilliant uh, which is a translation uh, to mean intelligent. That's not true. He does have an 82% approval rating according to the different pollsters who, by the way, some of them are based right here. So, Katie, he's keeping up with uh, Vladimir Putin's approval, but this man who obsesses <laughs> over polls completely either doesn't accept or understand how how high Vladimir Putin's disapproval is among Americans, among the world. <laughs> well, as a conservative Republican, I'm old enough to remember when we used to not like Vladimir Putin all that much. We were sort of in line with the rest of America on that. And, I, you know, it says something about how far we've come. But it also says something about Donald Trump, that he's willing to forgive people all kinds of atrocities as long as they really like him and they flatter him and they say nice things about him. And it's a very disturbing thing that you have a leader over there uh, who you know, crushes dissent, um, goes after journalists, is, is really, you know, when they talk about a strong man, uh, it's not a compliment um, in, in most circles. But this is something that Donald Trump seems to admire, and it all seems to be attached to the fact that Putin likes him. And I think that that's a, a disturbing part of his sort of narcissistic behavior. So, Katie, I mean, listen. Uh, Governor Romney has taken a strong stance against Donald Trump a number of times. Uh, why aren't we seeing more Republicans? I know you were joking when you said, I remember when we used to not like it. Vladimir Putin didn't just crush opposition. He kills. He has mm -hmm. taken exactly. lives of those who've opposed him. Um, why oh, and just so that you know, uh, that poll that they did that uh, shows that uh, Putin had an 82% approval rate. Well, Putin didn't like it because it wasn't high enough. So uh, he kicked the pollster out of his country. Why not a stronger response? Again, we're asking this about Speaker Ryan and some of the other leadership. You know, it's, it's befuddling to me. I, I do think that you will see that in the days ahead. I think that, that Republicans are going to be confronted with this question and, and more Republicans will come out and, tr and try to, you know, define themselves um, in a way that's different from the way that, that Donald Trump and Mike Pence have chosen to define themselves. Um, but. You know, it, it, people feel like they're in a, in a catch-22. You know, they're sort of a, a accused of, you know, party disloyalty if they don't support this guy that's literally dragging our party over the cliff. And I think for a lot of us, it's very confusing, frustrating, and, um, and irritating. I should See, and in my mind, what that means is 
uh, they don't give a shit about America. They, they're looking at party first and America second instead of the other way around because if they were looking at America first, uh, they would have, at the minimum, uh, denounced uh, Trump's support and praise for Putin. And uh, this, the only person that uh, thus far has come out uh, against those comments is Lindsey Graham. Remind people of the op-ed August 5th, um, Michael Morrell, the former CIA acting director at the time, he said Mr. Putin played upon Mr. Trump's vulnerabilities by complimenting him. He responded just as Mr. Putin had calculated. In the intelligence business, we would say that Mr. Putin had recruited Mr. Trump as an unwitting agent of the Russian Federation. Donald Trump did this interview on Russian television, English uh, language, Russian television with Larry King. His team is now saying he didn't realize that it was Russian television. Um, but Howard, let me pivot yeah. to this Washington Post. So I guess uh, Mike Morial was right that uh, Trump is an unwitting uh, surrogate or unwitting dupe for Vladimir Putin since he did do all right, let me back up. Since he didn't do his due diligence to find out what, where his interview was going to be shown, obviously state-owned Russian uh, TV is not a place that uh, he should have uh, done an interview for. Editorial on Hillary Clinton. The headline: The Hillary Clinton email story is out of control. They say Mrs. Clinton is hardly blameless. Blameless. She treated the public's interest in the sound record keeping cavalierly. But it goes on to say: Imagine how history would judge today's Americans if, looking back at this election, the records show that voters empowered a dangerous man because of a minor email scandal. There is no equivalence between Mrs. Clinton's wrongs and Mr. Trump's manifest unfitness for office. This is the Washington Post editorial here. Mm -hmm. um, does Hillary Clinton now, in, in Joe Scarborough's opinion, need to learn to quickly pivot? I've answered. There have been investigations. Let's move on. As Donald Trump has tried to let's move on with his well, taxes. I, I would say, uh, Tamron, that if, if Hillary Clinton can't pivot away from the email story to the Putin story, it will be campaign malpractice on the Democrats' part. Donald Trump is fundamentally un-American if he's going to argue that he finds Vladimir Putin to be a, a, a worthy and respected and respectable person. Uh, if you start a long litany of what Vladimir Putin has done in Russia, what he's done in the rest of the world, and you ask Donald Trump to defend it point by point, uh, that's, that's, that's several weeks worth of campaign attacks. I mean, I agree Hillary has to get her positive story out, but if she can't nail Donald <laughs> Trump on Putin, then I don't know what she can nail him on. Okay. I agree 100%. She should be up Donald Trump's ass on this until election day. And all of the people uh, that are running against the Republicans, particularly in the Senate and the House, uh, they should uh, tie every single one of the uh, Republicans uh, that are running and that haven't uh, denounced uh, Trump for his comments, they should tie every last one of them uh, to Trump and Putin. Now, uh, a lot of them might not win, but uh, you may be surprised uh, what time uh, Putin and Trump uh, to uh, people that you're running against uh, will do for your chances on uh, winning uh, an election against them. Quickly, I'm out of time, but I got to ask you, the Washington Post reporting that Donald Trump's Washington, D.C. policy staffers have quit. Uh, for the campaign after not being paid or publicly recognized. What are you hearing about his ground game after like a report like this? Just another example of Trump screwing people that work for him. And I'm still waiting to hear what's going to happen with that lawsuit that those little girls filed against uh, Trump uh, when they performed at his rallies and he hasn't paid them. Well, I'm hearing that the Republican uh, National Committee is doing everything that they can, and they've got, you know, real pros there doing everything they can to try to help Trump and try to help the rest of the ticket. But the Trump campaign itself is a total disaster and nowhere near the, the sort of operation that we had even in 2012, and we weren't successful. All right, Katie Howard, thank you both. really appreciate you joining me on this Friday. Thank Have a great you, week. I want to know when the RNC is going to fish or cut bait and uh, decide to uh, dump uh, dump Trump 
and concentrate on their down ballot races because, you know, based on everything that's going on at this point, uh, Trump is going to uh, lose the Senate for them at a minimum. And based on uh, these uh, last comments regarding Putin, uh, I'm thinking that uh, there's the possibility that the House may be back in play. Now that you've seen the video clips that I included, it's up to you to make up your own mind where you want to go with uh, this Trump situation because it's not going to get any better. Now we're going to see what happens during the debates and if the moderator brings this up, which he probably will, and how hard the moderator goes at him to get a solid answer on the reasons why Trump is disparaging our president in favor of this guy. Remember, Putin is in an authoritative dictatorship, basically, whereas we're in a democracy. Putin basically can do whatever he wants, whereas there has to be uh, acquiescence to uh, whatever Obama wants. So if you're saying a strong leader, you're talking about two people operating in two almost completely different systems.